Hi, I'm Balin Forcier, and you're watching RBA Interviews here on RBA TV. I'm here at the Lewis Ginter Botanical Gardens, and we're going to be interviewing Jay Forehand, curator of the Butterfly Exhibit. And how are you doing today, Jay? Doing great. Nice to talk to you today. So, butterflies. Yeah, butterflies. Uh, that's that's what I'm involved in right now. Butterflies. Butterflies, yes. And moths, actually. Uh, moths are kind of underrepresented. There's a difference? Actually, there's a, there's a large difference. Um, butterflies are generally diurnal, which means that, you know, they're sort of flying around uh, during the day. Moths are generally nocturnal. Um, there are some differences in the kind of antennae that they have. Um, you know, moths are going to have big fuzzy antennae, and, and butterflies are going to have sort of more spiny looking antennae. And it's sort of just like to, you know, normally what you'd think of as just being, uh, being antennae. And, and also, you know, they're, 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 there's a large difference in, in how they evolved. So, so butterflies and moths split a very, very long time ago. So how'd you first get interested in bugs? So I was young and I found uh, what, I, what I believe now to be uh, uh, the larva, the, the caterpillar of a Saturnid moth. I picked it up and I put it in a jar and I watched it eat for a few days and then my mom decided she didn't want it in the house anymore. So she put it on the front stoop and it kind of got uh, roasted <laughs> in the summer sun. And how many bugs have you uh, murdered since then? Just a couple hundred bugs. It's, it's kind of hard to put, to put a number uh, to it, um, but it's something that you know I, I do if I have some spare time. They start out as an egg. Okay, can we so, yeah, so yeah. Sort of, so you're going to want to get down and get into a nice ball shape. And, uh, and what's going to emerge out of that is, is going to be, or what's going to hatch out of that, is going to be a teeny tiny little caterpillar. And we're going to be eating, eating ladies. Eating, eating. Like, okay. hey, we got a good one over here. Okay. So essentially, we're going, to be, we're going to be munching on leaves. Can you tell us about the butterflies here at the Lewis Ginter Botanical Gardens? Here at the garden, they wanted to do something that signified uh, sort of the metamorphosis that the garden is undergoing. We've actually had just about every continent represented except Antarctica. So we've had African butterflies, we've had Asian butterflies, uh, we've had uh, even some European uh, butterflies, mainly Central and South American butterflies. So what's wrong with uh, American butterflies? Are they lazy? Not at all. A lot of folks like the tropical butterflies because they just, they've never seen them before. And uh, they've certainly, you know, even if they've seen them, it's been on a video or in a picture, they've never gotten a chance to actually get close to them. So if you could be any butterfly, what would you be? I would probably be a moth. I would probably be a, a spinged moth. Do you have any uh, butterfly tattoos? No, actually, I do not. You, you don't have a tramp stamp or anything? No, unfortunately, no, no. I, I haven't had the chance to get the butterfly tramp stamp yet. C can you prove it? I, yeah, actually, yes. No, I do not have a butterfly tramp stamp, unfortunately. Eventually, he's going to crawl into the dirt and uh, sort of go into a, uh, a, 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 a resting state. Uh, where he goes through his metamorphosis, he's kind of going to shrivel up underneath the dirt like this. Okay. And uh, that's when uh, the wing pads that started forming when he was a caterpillar are, are really going to start, you know, maturing and fully developing. And, uh, and he's going to start looking like uh, the adult moth. And they're going to emerge as, uh, as the, the adult moth. Uh, or, and this is the same for butterflies. So that's when they're actually going to have their big old wings. Big beautiful butterfly. Big beautiful butterfly and they're going to go fly around. No Tell us about the colors of the butterfly. What do the colors represent? Oh, um, they, 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 they serve, um, their, their main purpose is going to be, um, as far as I'm aware, is uh, mate selection. So, uh, you know, the main purpose for the adult stage in the, in the butterfly or the moth's life cycle is to find a mate and to copulate and, and re reproduce. Are there any colors that you like to wear for mating? Uh, no, no, not, not particularly, no. Um, there are uh, certain colors, actually, though, that the butterflies will respond to. Reds, we found, has been a very, very popular color for, uh, for a lot of the tropical species that we have. So if you wanted to mate with one of the butterflies, you would have to wear a lot of red? Is that what you're <laughs> trying to tell people? No, actually, uh, if you wanted to mate with one of the butterflies, you'd have to wear a very, very specific set of colors and in just the right patterns. You know, I really encourage folks to come out and see us. Uh, we're going to be closing, uh, you know, around October 11th. Is that your last day? That is our last day. Is that Sunday? Um, and, uh, and we encourage, you know, folks to come out and, and get a chance to see something that they're not really going to get a chance to see anywhere else. And it's only time to get your
Well, that's it for RVA interviews. The butterfly exhibit will be running here at the Lewis Ginter Botanical Gardens until October 11th. There's no place to ride. And it's only just begun. Give this one control. Give this one control. There's no place to ride. And it's only just begun. Give this one control. Give this one control. And there's no place to ride.